A very good evening and welcome to Kibumbi 2022. Time to make sense of the conversation around the economy as an element in the 2022 general election. And tonight, we are going to focus on this important topic because all the candidates in this election have been focusing on the economy aspect of their campaigns. It's a good way to look at the matters that matter in this election because everyone is making an issue out of it. Good evening and welcome to the show. This is our newsroom. And of course, right here is where you expect all the stories that we are going to have tonight on the bulletin to be uh, cooked. They are getting ready for you. And of course, the newspaper tomorrow is also going to have all the stories. And these are our reporters for the night. And let's begin the show tonight. And politicians say it's not wrong to prey on the weakness and inadequacies of the voter. So if you are poor, the politicians say, you are unable to meet your demands or the demands of your basic need, they say they will promise to get you out of your squalor. However, for your vote, politicians are responsible for no doubt impoverishing the electorate. Bad economic policies, politics of intolerance, theft, graft, unfulfilled election promises are the top of all this. So, should you believe what they tell you right now when they're still campaigning? Why should you or shouldn't you believe the politicians? Why should you look at what they're telling you critically? And of course, the other question is, what should you look out for in their words? What are they not telling you about their campaign pledges or slogans or even the political rhetorics? Find out tonight when we break down the agenda of the politician. We'll also be telling you why the next general election, the economy, could just reflect very badly on the current leadership. Akisa. Well, economy, economy, economy is all we're hearing in the current campaign trail as leaders traverse the country. And tonight, it's more of that. Candidates have made this their top agenda for the election. They're telling you what they will do for you. Youth empowerment, job creation, tax breaks, tariff review, more money set aside and all. But is this what you want to hear? Have you made economy your priority in this election? While some candidates are asking you for your input, but at the end of the day, will it count? It is indeed the state of individuals' economic welfare that drives this agenda. This is why tonight we lift the lead on what is exactly behind the economic push. Are they genuine? Is it doable? Realistic even? Of, or a facade to vote for them? We will be speaking to Kwame Owino, who is the CEO of the Institute for Economic Affairs, Manjiro Gekonyo, who's a national coordinator at the Institute for Social Accountability, and uh, Bilo Kero, who is uh, the former Senator Mandera County and also formerly chaired the Senate uh, Finance, Budget and Commerce Committee. I'll also be coming back at the top of the hour at 9 p.m. with the day's news. But first, Sophia. Indeed, Akisa, and each election cycle has a big issue or theme that drives it. Earlier on this year, you may remember the Building Bridges Initiative, BBI, by all accounts, had taken a center stage and would have significantly swayed that vote one way or the other. That's the 2022 vote. However, the legal headwinds BBI faced has turned the tables on this agenda as the economy agenda surged forward to take its place. Aspirants for the top seats are now engrossed in a contest of ideas on how to shore up a struggling economy with the youth at the center of it and while juggling debt concerns as well as the expansion of the tax bracket. My guest tonight is an authority on this subject. He led the economic recovery strategy in President Kibaki's administration, has worked with former Prime Minister Raila Odinga in crafting his economic blueprint, and is now Deputy President William Ruto's point man on the same. Economist David Ndi is going to be joining me shortly live for that conversation. And you can tweet us. Matt Sophia Wanuna at Ken Mijungu at Akisa Wandera. The hashtag is Kibumbi2022. But before we get into that conversation, it's another political season where promises are being made to the electorate. Perhaps the biggest promise 
uh, is with the economy and revamping the same. And as Kenya prepares for that election, economic models are emerging as focal points of discussion. And so we ask, has our political mature, uh, politics matured to issues and agendas, or is it the new wine in old wineskins? That is what our Brian George is seeking to put into context in the next report. Kenyans will be bracing for another election in just under nine months, and the political temperatures are high. The political drums are now warm, and the drumists are already doing the most. With the economy yet to bounce back, Kenyans are reeling from the coronavirus pandemic, which has left a trail of destruction in its wake. Lack of jobs, massive layoffs coupled with a ravaging drought. And as the search for the fifth president holds up, the electorate are not taking any chances. The economic conversation has taken center stage. We must prioritize matters of citizens and matters of leaders should wait. We must prioritize the employment of millions of young people who today have certificates, diplomas and degrees ahead of positions that are being bandied around for leaders. We must prioritize matters to do with empowerment of ordinary businesses as opposed to the sharing of power by the mighty. For as long as we have these distortions in the energy sector, we are not going to achieve the competitiveness that we ought to achieve in making us the premier economy in this region. Out of the contestants, a sharp focus on the economy has borne the conversation around what each leader is promising to deliver for the country's economy. Some chose the tune of capitalists, others' tempo is socialist, and for others, it's guesswork. Deputy President William Ruto has championed the bottom-up economic model, one that he says, if elected, will empower the people at the lower cadre of the society first with a multiplier effects toward the top. Makueni Governor Kivutha Kibwana has his Utu economic model, one that has echoes of socialism in it. Wiper Party leader Kalonzo Musioka has the 24-hour model, one which is very economical with detail. Amani National Congress Party leader Musale Mudavadi is fronting for the Pesa Mfukoni, also dubbed Uchumibora economic model. ODM leader Raila Odinga has been seen as the inconsistent in his economic models. Earlier in the year, he had the trickle-down economic model, later transformed to rural development, and lately he has adopted another social approach, a 6,000 shilling welfare package disbursed monthly to unemployed Kenyans. And so the question is, what is the place of economic models in an election? Interestingly, there is no straitjacket economic model that would solve a country's economic problems in wholesome. It is generally understood that the country is struggling economically and that the next election is about economics. And so this is why there's a lot of proposals as regards economic model uh, on the table. For, for citizens to consider. Even before the pandemic, there were underlying issues that needed fixing. The pandemic exposed the soft underbelly of the economic policies in the country, coupled with developments like the perceived punitive taxation that had Kenyans struggling worse than pre-pandemic. What then is a workable model? And while the discussion rages on, are there any countries that have successfully implemented an economic model? For example, the rural transformation agenda was implemented by Malawi, especially as regards agricultural development. Uh, that has pushed them towards food security um, and development that is rural based. China itself has uh, implemented the rural based uh, development agenda where there is, has been a lot of investment in manufacturing, um, tourist sites, and, and agriculture itself in the rural areas. And this has brought the country up uh, in terms of development. 
For a change, the political class are now keen to fix the economy and not just get elected out of popularity, a clear sign that the electorate is maturing as well as the Kenyan politics. But as the beats develop, whose music will the fans dance to? <laughs> Brian George Otieno, KT News, Nairobi. So what does this or what do these candidates stand for? We'll be telling you tonight about most of the candidates, if not all, and what they stand for. But let's begin with the top candidates. And uh, tonight, first, we tell you about all the candidates, all the aspirants who have declared that they're running for president. And William Ruto, Raila Dinga, who is yet to declare, but all indications are that Raila Dinga is running. Gideon Moy, Jimmy Wanjigi, Kalonzo Musioka, Mwangi Wairia, and Ruben Kigame. They've all stated that they want to be president. At least William Ruto is clearer than all of them. So let's talk about candidate William Ruto and what he means when he talks about his economic arm of his campaign. William Ruto is targeting the lower sector of the economy and he's promoting what he calls as hustlers movement, which is an, a bottom-up approach of William Ruto. That's some of the things William Ruto stands for. He still talks about job creation. He talks about employment of the youth and affordable credit given to all who need. And there's still much more in his bag. William Ruto's strategy also consists of hosting um, the economic forums where he's, make, he's discussing with uh, several people what they need him to implement when he, he becomes president. He's identifying economic needs across the board. So that's uh, part of the strategy, the strategy that William Ruto has. He has initiated programs targeting the youth so far. And of course, William Ruto is big on donation as part of his strategy in his economic implementation plan. Let's see what else uh, William Ruto stands for. And... Uh, he has set aside about 100, he says he will set aside about 100 million shillings for each constituency to add to the kitty that is a CDF, which is also about uh, 100 million. And uh, finally, let's see what uh, the strategy he's employing. He's, uh, no, actually that's for William Ruto. Let's jump now to the other candidate, Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga is big on fighting corruption. He's saying he will seal all the graft loopholes. He's also talking about employment and job creation for the youth. That's uh, Raila Dinga, and he talks about social empowerment also across the board, where we'll tell you next that he's also targeting to inject more money into the economy. His strategy includes pumping 100 billion shillings for social protection. So that's big for Raila Dinga, and that's not all, because he's also saying that he'll give you about 6,000 shillings uh, if you're needy, and all the needy households will, will be receiving this money, and he says he will work with the private sector to ensure that the economy improves. That's part of the strategy of Raila Dinga, and he's giving tax breaks if elected as president, subsidies, uh, subsidized credit, and of course tariff exemption if you elect him as president. Part of his strategy, he says that the level playing, the field is not so level. So what he's saying, I will level the playing field for small businesses in order for them to thrive. And he talks about securing international contracts for those in need. And that's not all part of his strategy set up government planning body. He was the former prime minister and he knows a lot about this and we'll be talking about it. And he talks about revamp revamping what was the export promotion cancer. But that is not all. He has his plan as the backbone of this economy and he's saying the ICT will be the backbone for the growth of the economy. We'll be telling you about Musele Mudavadi, who has declared again, and Gideon Moy. But first, let's take you to Sophia, who is on standby with economist Devin D. Sophia. Thank you very much, uh, Ken, uh, for that, uh, just outlining some of what these candidates or aspirants at this point are talking about what they would do if they are in charge. 2022 general election, the countdown is on, and clearly the issue that is shaping that election is this battle for economic uh, models and several of them have been put out Brian George as well had outlined some of those in his story and what these candidates have been saying and a man who's worked with those two candidates and even others who of course Ken will be giving us more details later on is David D who is an economist